Hi, welcome to another Colors of Prague. This is uh, Season 4, Episode 5. Um, normally, the Colors of Prague is where I uh, review and discuss uh, progressive music, CDs, vinyl, from bands past and present from all around the world. Uh, last show I did uh, a rare three concert reviews, and this time uh, we're going to revisit the Progressive Rock Bookshelf. So, um, it's a phrase I coined. (laughs) Firstly, so we'll be discussing prog rock related books, something I'd done in the early years of this podcast, but also a subject that bears repeating because while more and more um, there are sites on the internet that review recordings in the prog genre of music and live shows and others that appear on YouTube that do discussions like this or even interviews with uh, fellow journalists or band members, music rights is nearly always an issue, which aside from a band or music label's band camp page or YouTube or Apple or sometimes Spotify, Hearing and or listening to the music can also be sometimes frustrating, and a frustrating search. Which then, if you actually hear something that you are interested in getting, uh, your options are eBay, Amazon, uh, Spotify, Discogs, and then others. And there's a uh, few, uh, if you're in the U.S., And if you're not in the U.S., but if you're in the U.S., there's there's Doug Larson Imports, Symphonic Music, and Laser's Edge. Although my last few experiences with Laser's Edge is they don't pack any kind of uh, uh, careful wrapping in their boxes. So if you do a large order with them, you might end up with a few cracked CD jewel cases or bent uh, cardboard CD. So, uh, be it as, as it may. Uh, there's also CD Japan, which has some good prizes. Uh, you can all just Google that. So, so I spoke about the internet, right? So what happens? We're in, we're in the throes of a brutal winter across the U.S. Uh, and other countries. Uh, last year, we had a pretty calmer Winter. I don't know if this is going to sustain itself through the rest of the winter. It looks like in the coming weeks we might get a reprieve, but right now it's brutal. High winds, snow for a lot of you, and very deep freeze cold. So if you don't have an internet, you're going to be by that fireplace. You're going to reach for a book. So, um... Why go back to this? Well, you know, print resources. Print is print is always a good thing. It's it's uh, you have the physical book in your hand. You can't finish it. You lay it down. It's better than a Kindle. You know, uh, images on a Kindle are terrible, and Kindle seems to often magnify the text. It's like we're not that old yet, right? So, um, firstly, I'm going to discuss. Author John Kirkman. Uh, John Kirkman is a name um, familiar to the thousands who have sailed the cruise to the edge events over the years. John has been an interviewer and often introduced bands before they took to the stage. With a long career as a tour manager and eventually radio, Classic Rock Radio was a channel he launched in 2011, I believe. He also quite, had quite a relationship with the band members of Yes. Yes, Time and a Word, the Yes Interviews, was published in 2013. The book, illustrated with follow, photographs, quickly went out of print. I mean, like, quickly. Small press publication, I believe. And if you go find it now, it goes for princely sums. Uh, he interviewed 16 of the 18 surviving members of the band Yes, And uh, often he did this numerous times when they were doing press for their tours or separately uh, as he worked on the reissue of Chris Squires. He also worked on uh, 
Kirkman also worked on the uh, reissue of Chris Squire's Fish Out of Water, John Anderson's Lost Tapes of Opio, which I have to track down myself, and archival releases of the Yes Union album and the Anderson Bruford Wakeman Howe album. With time and a word out of print, a bare bones, not illustrated reissue was separated into several volumes titled Dialogue. Now, I've read two of the reportedly up to five volumes in a series. Uh, just short of about 200 pages, each dialogue features questions and answers between Kirkman and band members. So, uh, I gifted the books to a dear friend in Asia who I've dubbed the Queen of Prague um, because she's a huge Yes, yes fan and, and I don't think she was aware of this and apparently she wasn't and I sent them off to her as a gift and um, I, I read them thoroughly and I enjoyed them we're going to get into things so here, this was volume one I did make a photocopy Dialogue, the Yes interviews. Yeah, it's got this weird satellite thing on there. And um, and these were the first two volumes I had of this uh, series. So, uh, again, they're just short of about 200 pages each, more or less. Uh, questions and answers by Jim Kirkman and band members. And I wish the topics and conversations were in chronological order. Uh, but this jumps back and forth uh, without rhyme or reason. Often the same topics or questions are covered at times over a span of years. I assume Kirkman was hoping for an interviewee to open up about something he was interested in hearing about again. Therefore, that's why he asked often years later the same thing. But some people don't really like to talk about things. Chris Squire often uh, Chris Squire appears to often be cagey, um, not too reflective in his sections. While surprisingly, Steve Howe opens up here and there. Right, <laughs> you would have thought the other way around. Still, personally, I would have preferred a more of a timeline approach, even if it meant tearing everything apart by having more of a chronology. I still recommend these two books to, uh, out of the five. I see they published five of them. Um, two hardcore Yes fans out there. Uh, I found these on Amazon, published in 2020. They go for more or less 20 something dollars. Um, again, not illustrated, but bouncing back and forth. Uh, but you get to read interviews with uh, band members, uh, everybody. And uh, what did I say? Like uh, 16 of, of out of the original 18 surviving members. So not a bad thing. It's just like uh, hand it over to an editor, let the guy rip everything apart, and then this way you could read comments from the uh, questions and comments from the band members chronologically, and it gives you more of a, of a picture. But I guess that was too much of a, of a job, and um, yeah, I get it. So next, we're going to go to A New Day Yesterday. It's a hefty tone. UK progressive rock... <sighs> And the 1970s by Mike Barnes. At well over 600 pages, you would think this would at least be a fun read from a writer for the British music magazines Mojo and Prague. But Barnes has an uptight and stuffy side and, and, and has issues stating what artists and bands he intently dislikes and those he's gaga over. True. Um... He finds a classic prog of Yes, Jethro Tull, and even Gabriel Evergenesis not much to his liking. But manages to get a few words in words out anyway. Obviously more drawn to the psychedelic or Canterbury uh, 
sounds of soft machine, gong, Kevin Ayers. It makes sense that he also published a book about Captain Beefheart. Uh, Barnes makes choices on what albums he discusses or not. So at six... Yeah, at around 600 pages. Um, it's a hefty book. But he says little about important bands or albums and possibly too much about personal favorites. Hey, it's all subjective, right? Music is all subjective. But it, it sometimes appears like a, um, a thesis. Uh, it does not make easy reading and um, this is a book deeply in need of an editor to like fix the issues with it um, published in 2020 I believe you can find this on Amazon the typeface is small so you can imagine that a larger typeface this thing would have been immense um, it's just not a great book um, not many illustrations we're not here for that anyway right so but when when somebody is um, so uh, intent on saying, well, I don't like this, but I, I have to cover it. So, well, then just don't, you know, because uh, I, don't, I don't know where, where the person's coming from, really. So, another one. And yes, we can review albums that aren't great, um, but a lot of heart, heart, blood, sweat, and tears goes into uh, making music. And and uh, wherever the whatever the band is from, whatever country, whatever language it is, they have a vision, and we may not like it, or it might go and skew into that tech metal or prog metal or all all these variants that that have rio prog avant prog you know it's, there's so much stuff going on out there or jazzy fusion type um i kind of like everything unless it just doesn't click with me but admittedly i will go back music to something that didn't work for me i would pull it back out later and say Okay, and I'll reassess my thoughts and opinions on it. Also published in 2020 is Charles Snyder, Strawberry Bricks Guide to Progressive Rock, the third edition. That's this. Very colorful. Um, like Mark, Mike Barnes, A New Day Yesterday, it too suffers from the author's omission in, in the introduction that he likes this and not that. Henceforth, you have capsule reviews, mini reviews, if you like, and the ones the band, and the ones the bands and music prefer is little more than that. Like New Day, Snyder's approach uh, is equally random. Uh, he covers more than UK prog, um, but albums, timelines, uh, seem to have come out of the washer spin cycle in a random fashion. Just saying, books like this need an editor. Um, you know, it, it. We don't get a lot. We get what he likes to write about. And it is chronological, if, if I gave you a confusing thing. But he likes more of the, although there's a few key big, big, big albums in here from international bands. You know, Far East Family Band, Nipponjan, uh Rush, Van de Graaff Generator. He, uh, Snyder tends to like more of the uh, harsher sounds or experimental sounds. So there's that. And there's a lot of Canterbury, so he also leans toward that as well. Um, I just didn't love this book. But when you read a book, you don't start reading it like, I hope I love this book. It just didn't really work for me. I think this was another book that was in need of an editor. But, you know, it's if you don't have it in your bookshelf, I 
prefer this over a new Dave, the one I just discussed. So next, Rock Progressive Italiano, an introduction to Italian progressive rock by Andrea Parentin. What's this? At 380 pages, this is my favorite of two books that cover purely Italian progressive rock. Parentine used to host a website in Italian, I believe, um, but is also a longtime contributor and reviewer on the internet, progarchives.com. So what well, makes this guide so good? Well, we have a discussion of the politics and religion, and sometimes violence, that sparked these bands to create music. Uh, when reviewing a particular album, he translates key lyrics into English, which helps give the curious non-Italian speaking listener more insight to what is often referred to as one of the most romantic Eng uh, one of the most romantic languages in the world. Although he's only covering 100 more or less albums from a variety of artists and bands, um, it's quite good. There's reviews of albums from Aria, Banco, PFM, Le Arme, Goblin. Wakanda de la Fate, Alpha Taurus, New Trolls, Osana, Museo Rosenbach, Aqua Fragile, and so many more. Although the latest edition appears to come from 2011, don't expect any bands from late 2000s to appear, nor mention of still performing, touring, and recording bands. Oh, also the author has a theme. So the reviews are not in alphabetical or chronological order so much, but a timeline with, I, but I'm fine with this. Uh, this time out. But I really, really like this one. Highly recommend this one. Found it on Amazon. And I think this might be list. This one's big. This is Augusto Croce, who created and maintains the website italianprog.com. He came up with this large size, uh, nearly 600 page encyclopedia titled Italian Prog, the Comprehensive Guide to Italian Prog, the Italian Progressive Music of the 70s. The latest edition is from late 2016. So what do we have here? We have more than 600 bands um, which makes this invaluable to those who uh, any kind of interest in the music. Uh, everything appears alphabetically, then chronologically. There are also numerous, uh, not high res, uh, illustrations of bands, album covers, single sleeves, etc. But what we are given here is a bio for each band, and sometimes one uh, for a solo artist of note. Then a discography, and this is really cool. His discography includes vinyl and compact disc releases and cassettes and fan club releases where applicable. Also, the author managed to find original labels of release and up to the publication in 2016, what labels re-released a particular recording. You'll be surprised that vinyl or even CD is older than you think. Um, I have a lot of uh, Italian Prague on vinyl and uh, quite a lot of it on CD. And I thought it was a recent re-release and I've seen it appear in this book. And I went and looked and I said, wow, the seller or dealer or whoever I got it from had an original. It hasn't been reissued since 2005, 1996. Quite, quite interesting. While Parentine and Croce are obviously Italian-born and speaking, one should be patient with the translations into English. Here and there we'll note some odd phrasing, but there's nothing serious. Now, there are books out there on French Prague, Norwegian Prague, Latin, Japanese, and on and on, and there's even more from numerous authors about Italian Prague bands. But as of yet, beside pragarchives.com, which I've mentioned a few times, 
where all the reviewers and contributors write in English or translate it into English. The thoughts, uh, these two books are the only two books printed in the English language on Italian prompt, to my knowledge, and I, I believe it's to, to this day, whether there's, there's so many or they are going to go back and do it again, but this is pretty spectacular. I mean, they even discuss bootleg releases. I mean, how hardcore is that? And uh, why is it invaluable <laughs> that re-release of a particular CD you thought was like, oh, well, I got one, and then you find out it's it's actually a bully. It was released by this small label. So, um, good stuff. Um, so, yeah, you buy that fireplace, power's out. You want to read about Pog, Prague and you can't listen to music? Well, hopefully you have a way of listening to music, but if you can't listen to music, pull these out. Anyway, so, yeah. The Kirkman books are are good. You know, it's it's a lot of a lot of stuff about yes. Uh, really, he gets those guys to speak as, as much as he can, uh, especially Steve Howe, as I mentioned. Um, uh, but the scatter shot. You know, when you when you're into volume two, you're like, well, didn't we cover this in volume one? And why didn't somebody just take all these volumes and just like boom? Edit them. Uh, but anyway, he's a good man. He's a gentleman, and uh, I've I've seen him numerous times. I've met him, and uh, if somebody's going to do it, let him do it. And um, probably the one I didn't like the most, the one I liked the least, was uh, New Day, Mike Barnes. Uh, Charles Snyder's book is not terrible if you picked it up for a good price. But the two books on, uh, rock, on Italian progressive rock, I highly recommend. A lot of you guys have been asking me, like, well, I'm, or even mentioning sometimes, I'm not familiar with this. I don't know too much about this genre. Um, anyone who's done the uh, Cruise to the Edge, for example, PFM have appeared a couple of times, so have other bands over the years. So uh, this should give you an idea of what that sounds like. Uh, it's a big thing. So, anyway, so, that's our show for today. Ran a little longer than I intended, but uh, talk about a lot of books and uh, hopefully give you an idea of what I think you should, like, check out or not. And uh, we'll be back with Cool Backdrops soon. Stay safe, stay warm, and I'll be back in a few weeks. Okay.